Hi, Emmanuel Church. I'm Kenny, and I'm introducing myself from inside of a car today because of a very specific reason that I'll get to later. I'm born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada, and most of the time when you think Vegas, you think casinos, Sin City, and I actually have a sense of pride knowing that the city has a lot more to offer if you look in the right place. I have two brothers, one older and one younger, and we grew up having a lot of time playing out in the desert, very competitive with one another. And when we get together with our parents now, we realize our competitive nature came from them. So we play Jackbox TV. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but it's a whole bunch of different games you can use uh, using your smartphones. And there's only been a few trips to the hospital. It's been a lot of fun, but it always ends in last regardless. One of my favorite characters in scripture is King Jehoshaphat in 1 Kings. And he's one of my favorite because he's the ruler of a nation and the Old Testament is filled with different kings. But he stops and asks, is this the Lord's will? And he even says it. He says, if this is the Lord's will, we'll do this. Even though he has control of everything and has nobody to stop him, he still asks, what do we do? Is this the Lord's will? And that's the kind of leader I want to be. When I've led ministries before, it's not always about my ideas or my preferences or the ideas of the kids or the parents. It's about, God, what do you, what do you see for this group? What do you want to be revealed to this group? What do you want this group to do? And praying and fasting over that question. And I'd like to ask all of you a question. Obviously, you don't have to answer it. But what's your relationship like with the youth group right now? And a lot of times when you ask that, people have a knee-jerk reaction. Well, that's not my area of ministry. I don't have kids or I don't have kids that age. And those are all perfectly fine reasons. But I ask it because I envision for Emmanuel, the youth group having a direct influence on your lives, not just the uh, members of the church, but the members of the staff as well. I envision them being able to pray for you, being able to lead you in worship, being able to preach to you, not just at a youth event, but just as a part of your walk with Jesus, being influenced on how God is influencing their lives. Because in Matthew 28, when we're called to make disciples of nations, there's no age restriction. And kids are restricted from top to bottom. We know that they can't drive, they can't drink, they can't vote, they can't stay out late, they can't watch R-rated movies. And those are all fine restrictions, but the ways that matter most in life, being able to pray for a complete stranger, being able to develop a ministry action plan that is completely from their own creativity and experiences, they're able to do that right now. So training them in how to harness their creative energies and thoughts into a gospel-driven way of impacting their schools, their households, their friends, and yes, their church, is what I hope to bring to Emmanuel. And in my mind, I know that it's not just about them or the schools that they go to or where the season that they're at in life. We all have the potential to do the same thing. And that's why I'm doing this from inside of a car because recently I started doing some lift driving and I asked the same question, Lord, how can you use me inside of this? I've only, gonna, I've only got like five minutes to talk to people sometimes and it's not a sermon. People may not wanna talk about religion. There's tons of things that could get in the way. But I'm willing, Lord. And he inspired me to make this. It says, lift and learn. And what it is is a journal that writers get in and they open up to the tune section and they see other albums that lift writers have just listened to and that they liked. Same thing with restaurants, same thing with books in different places around town. And they just get to keep adding and adding and they get to see other cool places. Best part about the journal is that the last tab says prayers. If they have a prayer request but don't want to say it, then they can write it down and then I get to read it later. And all of this is completely anonymous. And I kid you not, just seeing the prayer tab has begun dialogues with me and other people. In this car, I've been able to pray for people that were only sitting in here for 10 minutes because of whatever thing they just felt that they could share with me. That's the capacity we have in any season of life if we're willing to let the Holy Spirit direct us, if we're willing to let the Holy Spirit say, go, try this. And if we're not afraid of being rejected, I don't want our, the kids at Emmanuel to feel rejection from anybody when they know they have acceptance. 
from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what they get to take everywhere they go if we equip them. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video and to learn a little bit about me. I hope you have a great rest of your week and a blessed weekend. Peace! Somewhere over the rainbow, <laughs> way up.